Yeah. Yeah, old school. That's what I'm talking about. Listen, this ain't for everybody. Some of y'all need to hear this. Huh. I know you're in the trenches fighting, but check it out. I'm going to put it down like this so I can help the saints understand. Everything you're going through is all part of the master plan. Or what? You thought because you got saved, everything was going to be peaches and cream? You better wake up, son. Don't nothing come to a sleep but a drink. Faith without works is dead. Read your Bible. You know what it says. He who don't work, don't eat. Slackers don't get fed. Huh, yeah. Jesus said, he who puts his hands to the plow looks back the same ain't fit. Some of y'all ain't been in the church for five minutes and you're about ready to quit. I ain't mad at you. I'm just hitting you with the real. <laughs> if you died for me and I was still tripping, now how you think that make you feel? Check this out. Deep game. This here's deep, huh? Some of y'all ain't sawing nothing but you're stuck at trying to reach, huh? But after him who was able to possess your father by his glory. Struggles might be part of your testimony, but it ain't the end of the story. Now the point is this prophesied way back in the day. Choir, sing your hook right here and see if the church can relate. Of the tribe, you. you say, why you? But your church say, what would Jesus do? Why are you asking if he ain't trying to do what he's saying? Huh? He told you he was going to have tribulations, but you thought he was playing. Huh? One minute you're telling how good God is and can't nobody beat the talk. The next minute you're backfighting so fast, it's like you're moonwalking. Huh? Oh yeah, I'm preaching to myself because I ain't no better. Huh? It ain't like I've been following his every word, obeying it to the letter. But we soldiers, we got to remember that. Regroup, stay on point. Hey, yeah, bow down, confess, repent, stay humble, let him anoint. Huh? It ain't easy as I thought it was. I'd be lying if I told you that. But it's showing up getting better all the time. Trust me, that's the fact. Ain't never we going through that can't be handled. God put that on his tongue. Like they say, you can shout now if you want to, because the battle's already won. So while you're going through the battle, don't even trip. You're going to be on top. Quiet in the hook line one more again. This time you don't stop. I know we can Stay safe and stay strong. Yeah, 
yeah, man, would hopefully, man, and and you, first of all, man, we got to tell everybody use common sense, man, because there's so many mixed messages out there. You know, one person yeah, tell you this, yeah. another person tell you that, but you know, like Mama used to tell us, man, common sense is not common. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, that's true. You know, yeah. But yeah, you know, you you know, do the things that you know work. You know, stay you know, stay safe. Like I said, and um, this thing's gonna you know pass. It's gonna pass. And uh, I just can't wait to get back to normal. <laughs> you know. Okay. Well, I mean, hey, look, I kind of hesitated for a moment, Chris. I'm like, okay, now what is the new normal going to be? <laughs> no, not not new normal. Just you know, not not having to camp out. You know. <laughs> You know, Yo, back to, I, I, you know, I, going down to the, to the movies, to the restaurants, you know, and, you know, doing the things we used to do, you know. Yeah, I, I understand. But, you know, this is giving us some time to mean to uh, to self-reflect and to uh, look at the things that we've been doing, uh, things that we are doing, and the things that we want to do. So it has been giving us that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah definitely been giving us that opportunity well let me tell my listeners a little bit about you i'm sure you know the ones that don't know should know um this is mr chris jasper he's one of the dynamic writers songwriters musicians that uh put the isley brothers on the map and i know everybody know who the isley brothers are and i'm sure you're familiar with uh you know chris's music between the sheets and uh for the love of you and uh, fight the power, and I know everybody know those songs. So sit back and uh, let us get into this conversation. And if you have any questions and you want to chat with Chris, just press number one on your phone, and we'll be glad to let you in and talk to the man personally. So Chris, let's start off with a little bit about um, I know, well I don't know the early background and. What got you interested in this music business? Well, uh, I guess it started when I was really, really young. I was, um, you know, a little kid and about seven years old. And actually my mother, you know, uh, got me to start taking piano lessons because she saw me, um, you know, playing like some of, you know, the artists like Sam Cooke, Ray Charles stuff. You know, I used to hear it on the radio and I'd go to the piano and start trying to play it by ear. And she said, hey, you have a good uh, ear for music. you got to, you know, learn how to read music. So she um, hooked me up with a professor that she knew, and he t- she started teaching me a lot about, you know, music and composition and how to read music. And um, I started to uh, really pay attention, and I learned a lot about composing from a very young age. And... Um, Okay, I think that's what got me started with music because I was always, you know, my first love was R&B. I always loved the R&B artists like, you know, Marvin Gaye and Ray, uh, Sam Cooke and Ray Charles and uh, all the other ones too. And um, it started very, real early for me. You know, um, you know, there was a time that, that uh, well, at least where I come from, either you played music, played uh, sports, or picked cotton. Uh, but you know, there was a time in the, in, in the early days, you know, where um, <clears throat> they did they had a lot more music programs, you know. And I talked to a lot mm-hmm. of the seniors, or should I say, elected officials nowadays about the subject, where you know they took a lot of mu- music programs out of school uh, at, at an early age. You know, I remember, you know, playing in the band in elementary school and and. Mm-hmm. You know, l- learning harmony and and stuff like that, and you know they gave you an instrument to take home without you having any money. Mhm. Mm-hmm. That's right. You yeah. know, and we didn't ha- we you know we didn't have computers back then, so we had mm-hmm. to learn how to read music and 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 play an instrument. And and I really hate that they did that now. I mean, they gave them computers. Uh, they know how to sample music. Uh, you know, from you know guys like yourself. You know, they learn how to sample that, but I feel like we lost a lot of musicians. Yeah, that, I, I think that was a big mistake taking um, music education out of the out of the curriculums. I mean, um, I mean, there's there's even been studies done that show that uh, when people can read music, uh, it helps 
them learn in, in other ways, too. It's almost like learning another language. And it's, it's really good for your mind, even if you don't, you know, choose music for a career. Um, it's good to learn how to, you know, play an instrument. I remember coming up, there was always a piano in a person's house I went to, or apartment, you know. And somebody in their family could play the piano, you know. And it was part of the culture, you know, that learning an instrument, learning an instrument was part of the culture. And um, I think we've gotten away from that, and, and it's too bad because all of the songs that, you know, like came out, you know, during the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and 80s, you know, uh, a, lot, the, a lot of those musicians were trained, you know, like I was, you know, especially the arrangers and the composers. Um, and a lot of great, great music came out of that era, you know. And and I think it's a large part because, like he was saying, people grew up learning how to play instruments. And the musicians are the ones that kind of establish what music is going to sound like, you know. And um, there was a, so much diversity back then, even in the R&B um, genre. It was so much diversity. You had groups like Earth, Wind & Fire. You had James Brown. You had the whole Motown sound. You know, you had Philly yeah. International. You had the Isley Brothers. You know, you had, you know, the Commodores. You had P-Funk. You know, you had Sly and the Family Stone. You know, all of them having their, their, their own style. And uh, I'm sure it's because, you know, they were musicians, you know, and it, yeah. and it really blessed us with the great music. Yeah, uh, a, a, a very, I would say various different artists with various styles. And, you know, I hear a lot, I talk to a lot of young artists today, and they say, well, I got my own thing. I got my own music and I got my own sound. And it's kind well, of funny, Chris, because I always ask them, I say, well, what did your mother and daddy listen to? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, I mean, it's not nearly as much diversity as it used to be. I mean, a lot of people are copying each other, you know, a lot of songs sound the same. You can, sometimes you can't tell one artist from the next. And I think that's because, you know, the lack of musicianship, you know, um, right. Because generally a musician will know what musical direction he wants to take. Like Donnie Hathaway didn't sound the same as, you know, some other artists or like a, a Motown artist, you know, he had his own direction, you know, and that's what you that's what you get when you have you know musicians and and you know Hathaway he was also trained a trained musician you know what I mean mm -hmm. a, a lot of them were uh, even even I didn't even know Marvin Gaye was really a great pianist until you know I started to learn more about him you know right right but, but he told me one. I could he, he 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 told me I couldn't play basketball worth nothing. <laughs> Yeah, he always he also dabbled in sports a little bit too, you know. But but you know he was, you know again, musicians have generally have their own direction they want to take, and that's good for music. You know what I mean? I, I think that's yes, really good is. for music to 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 have all those different branches branching out, and you know, uh, it, it really enriches, you know, uh, our 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 musical experience. How, how do you feel like? How do you feel about uh, artists? I should I say artists that that deal with you know different producers, you know, and and you know certain producers they always want to uh, lock artists into a exclusive deals. But my thought was, you know, the more different producers you deal with, it kind of opens you up. It, it it brings out things that you don't even know this within yourself. You know, how do you feel about that? Well, that is true, you know, so uh, different producers have different, um, you know, concepts of what, you know, they want the music to sound like. Um, I think, I I always believe the more you're exposed to, um, the more you're going to be able to take your music in different directions. And producers is another way to do it, you know, because, you know, Quincy is going to be different than, say, some other producers, you know. 
because, you know, right. he's going to be different because of his background. You know, look where he took Michael Jackson, you know. Look, look, look how his music just opened up, you know, when Quincy got involved. And um, that, you know, producers do have their vision, too, you know, and uh, right. it, that's important. Yeah, I always thought it was uh, <clears throat> a, a, a good thing for an artist to, you know, to work in um, – work with different producers like you said different producers got different styles they hear different things and a lot of times they hear and see talent uh within us that we don't see ourselves yet Mhm. yeah that's that's true that's true um and I, and, I, and i know that from experience you know i know that from experience because there's songs that you know i wrote for the icy brothers that you know, they would they would have never the older guys would have never thought to write. <laughs> you know, they would have never thought to write some of those songs. But I heard right. it and I knew, hey, you know, uh if we go this direction, you know, it it would be good, you know. Uh but again, you know, like I said, it it generally comes from people who have that broad background in music that can take music someplace else. You know what I mean? Um I always believe a person can't produce what is not inside of them, you know, what they don't have experience with. You know, that's why you want that's why even in sports you want to you want a coach that that has experience, you know, who has done this before, you know, who who has lived it. You know what I mean? And, you know, his vision for 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 a team, you know, can take a team a certain place. Like 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 a great example was when Walsh took over the 49ers. I don't know if you remember though, that period of the 49er period, but it took the team to a, another level, another place, and another scheme, you know, offensive schemes, you know, that I'm sure a lot of the players weren't thinking about, <laughs> you know. Right. But when he got involved, it took that team, you know, to Super Bowls, you know. And um, it's the same thing in music. When a person can has experience and background in music, you know, you know Quincy also he produced Brothers Johnson too, you know, he's he's a heavy guy, you know, as far as, as experience, and it took them to another place. Um, I just think that's very important, you know, uh, that whoever is producing has a vision of where they want that music to go or where they want that artist to to do within the context of that music, you know, and that's, that's very important. I, I certainly agree with that. You know, on the, on the, on the flip side, you know, nowadays uh, in the industry, they say you sound so much like this. So, I mean, it, it's good and bad, you know what I mean? Because if you sound like too much like somebody, then it's not a good thing. But then if you mm-hmm. sound a little bit like somebody but not quite like somebody, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's a great thing. It just kind of depends on the a and the people and, and how they're listening. And they they really won't say they know what they're looking for, but they really do because they want to compare you with, you know, other artists. And then they don't want you to be too much like that artist because they don't want the competition either. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I can could, I could understand that, yeah. So, Chris, uh, uh, so since since the Isleys, uh, you know, what, what have you been doing? Uh, I've been doing, you know, really concentrating on my own material, basically. Um, I've had, I've produced some other artists, too, and I did some work with Shaka Khan, you know, on her CK album. Uh, but, you know, I've been basically concentrating on my own albums. And um, the album that I've just finished and that's coming out June 1st, that's, you know, going to be my 16th solo album, you know. And um, it's a it's an album that kind of, uh, you know, people were asking me to do. You know, for so many years, you know, like, why don't you go back and do some of the Isley Brothers songs, you know, uh, that you wrote, you know, back in the day. And um, it just so happens that my son got married in September, and he asked me to do another version of For the Love of You, you know, the song uh, that was big when I was with the group. And I said, okay, let me mess around. Let me see what I can come up with. And uh, I started working with it, and... uh, you know, as I work with it, I liked it more and more, and I, and and that was the first song I did for this album, which is an an album of covers, and three of them are from the Isley Brother catalog. Uh, I did a Sam Cooke uh, song, 
uh, one of his classics, uh, Nothing Contains This Love. That's the single that's out now. And, um, and some other popular songs, too. And so that was something that I used to do with the group, too, is rearrange, you know, a song that was popular, you know, like Hello, It's Me or Don't Let Me Be Lonely Tonight, you know, Summer Breeze, you know. And um, I kind of like to do that, too. So it was a fun album to do, you know, to to do my own arrangements of songs that people were familiar with, you know. Yeah, I can definitely, definitely imagine because, you know, as a, as a perfectionist, you always want to see what you could do better. Yeah, and you, you want to you wanna make, you know, add some new elements to it, you know what I mean? You want the song to be recognizable, but then at the same time, you know, add a little new flavor in there and uh, some, sometimes totally different musical statements, you know, and that that work well with it too, you know. And that's that's, that's fun to me because it's, it, it brings back a lot of the things that, you know, I learned in composition, you know, studying composition and, you know, how to, how to treat a theme, how to invert it, how to, how to do different things to it to make it uh, new and fresh, you know. So. What would you tell uh, uh, some artists out there that that um, they always want to do something new, and they never want to, you know, I mean, they, had, they always want to do new songs, but it seems like they don't want to continue to do the songs that made them happen, if that makes sense. Uh, I kind of know what you mean. Um, and th- that happens, I think, because maybe people around them, you know, sometimes a label will be, you know, pushing an artist in a certain direction or, you know, someone close to them can be saying, hey, well, you know, I think you can do this as well, you know. Um, but gen- generally, uh, it's it's good to, to know where, where you're strong, where your strong point is. I think every artist should know that. You know, what, what is it about you that makes you you, you know? Um, for, for me, it happened to be, you know, the, how I write music, my, my composition style, the way I produce, the, the sounds I put in my record, you know, uh, the, 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 the chord structures that I use are different and they're unique, you know? And that's what gives me my identity, you know? Uh, I realized that a long time ago. Uh, and so that's why I maintain that. I maintain that to this day. I write new songs, but I, there's certain things that will remain within the context of the music that gives it its identity. Um, and um, other people may have different strong points. I don't know. But you, that's one thing you have to realize is what am I really, really good at and what, what is it that people really, really appreciate about what I do? And I think if you get further, the further away from that you get, I think the weaker the product gets. Right. I agree. I certainly agree with that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Something else I want to ask you. Um, Have you always played uh, uh, keyboards or were there some other uh, instruments that you were interested in? Well, yeah, I started with piano and, you know, keyboards. That's what I started with and, have been with the longest, but along the way I picked up, you know, uh, drums and uh, percussion instruments and the bass and guitar, you know, uh, they they kind of came a little later, but, um, you know, they've been a big part of what I do, you know, I, I play all the instruments on my records, you know, and, you know, if you're getting a Chris Jasper record, you're getting everything, <laughs> you know. Everything is Chris Jasper. It's not just singing, you know. Um, I generally write the songs and play all the music and do all the backgrounds, you know. But once in a while, I have a little help on the backgrounds, you know. My wife will come in once in a while and and help on that. But, you know, you're generally getting, you know, everything from me. And and I, I like that because uh, I can play exactly what I want, you know. Sometimes it's hard to... Uh, tell another musician what to do, you know. Right. Um, <laughs> it's, look, I, especially like Quincy Jones. Well, Quincy used to say, leave your ego outside the door. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah, you know, sometimes you know people they want to do what they want to do, you know, and it's is um I like I like very specific parts, especially on funk. You know what I mean? Yeah. Funk is very specific if it's done well. You know, you listen you break down any funk song, it's very specific and you can't be going crazy and, you know, going wild, you know, on a funk song. You know, but it is, sometimes it's hard to rein rein a musician in, you know. Right, they, but they don't want to stay in. The, they don't want to stay in yeah, the pocket. Huh? Stay in the pocket, man. Play this part right here. You know what I mean? And, some, and sometimes it's hard to get them to do that, or it's hard to get them to feel what the part is doing. You know, uh, sometimes people can play the exact same notes, but don't have the right feel. You know, and it doesn't sound the same. You know, which which makes the difference between, say, a band that recorded a song, and then you hear a cover band do it, right? And it right. and it, it doesn't sound the same, you know. And that's sometimes it's because they're not playing the right parts, but it's sometimes they're playing the right part, but not with the right feeling, you know, touch. You know, funk funk is a very touch sensitive uh, thing too, uh, especially when you talk what about if, keyboard, what, keyboards and what, guitar what and bass. You know, it's, yeah, it's, it's I was going to ask you, what, what, about a, what about a cover band that actually can play the song better than the original? That Yeah, well, that rarely happens. Very <laughs> rarely happens. I mean, because, you know, I'll go to play sometimes, and I'll, I'll hear live bands, and, you know, they'll, they'll play the song, and I said, that's good, you know. But, uh, you know, it's not like the record, though. You know, it's not like it's not like Earth like and the Fire played it, you know what I mean? Right, I mean, right. You know what I'm saying? It, it, Sometimes they come close. I, I very, I, I very rarely hear a band play it better than the original. Uh, I, I, I haven't heard that. Uh, maybe that happens, but you know. Well, I mean, that's where they, that's why they came up with karaoke too, man. I mean, you can sit up there and study it for for uh, 50 weeks, you know, and you <laughs> should be kind of good. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't play it and heard it a long time. You remember back in the day when we was in the studio, when we was dealing with uh, the 24 track machines, and you could just punch yeah. in and punch out. You know oh what yeah. I mean? Oh yeah, the, the 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 big tape, the two inch. Yeah. Yep, the two inch. The two inch I, reels. I, look, yeah, I don't, I I don't want to. I don't want to date myself, but I still have one. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I have to say, you got some nice sounds. You know, it, the nice sounds from the tape. You know, uh, from the analog tape. I mean, it, it sounds good. You know, it's just harder to work with. You know, it's a lot more involved. But um, but I, don't yeah, know, man, I always I, thought, like said, I thought the two inch tape, you know, we had those little those little nuances like uh, you could hear your fingers on the strings or uh, yeah. you could hear artists take a breath. Sometimes to me the digital stuff now is, is like a hospital. It's it's too clean. You know what I mean? It's just too clean. I know clean, what you mean, that yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. It, it it had it had more of a punch to it too, you know, the 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 analog, you know. It, it was just I don't know. I I don't know if I if it's something I got used to or, but when when I hear it I say I, I can hear a difference you know. Yeah. There is now, a you're difference. on point with that. Yeah, you're on point with that because to me the the analog say, sound you know like a lot of the old school cats they used to say that it it, it was fatter. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Said, it was fatter. Mhm. And I know I, I know I a lot of the young. I know a lot of artists probably listen to this. They don't. What is he talking about? Fatter. They probably don't know what that means. I <laughs> know, but it's it's. But it just um, sounds like the range, the dynamics of the song. Uh, I mean, yeah. the, the the music. You know, the keys, the bass. Uh, you know, the horns. You know, like uh, um, you know, the horny horns brought to the table. I mean, oh, yeah. you just yeah. the, the, just the, the sound was just fatter. You know, you could resonate. It has a whole different. This punch to it, like you said, just have a whole yeah. other thing with it. Yeah, it is, it is, it's different. It definitely is. Yeah, definitely, I definitely, I love that. But listen, for those just joining the show, um, we got Mr. Chris Jasper talking to us about uh, his music, his career. He's bringing us up to date on about what he's been doing, what's going on. Uh, if you'd like to join the conversation, just press number one. You don't have to be afraid. You know, he's not going to bite you. 
You know, just you might keep your mask on, but it'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris, look, we got we got for the love of you uh, queued up, man. So we're gonna let our listeners put their ear on this. Okay. And, and uh, we could chop it up some more, though. Hey, everybody, you know what I like to say. You know, let the windows down, turn the air conditioner up, and uh, put your ears on this. This is for the love of you, Mr. Chris Jasper.
Yeah, and then they, and they bring it out and they make you feel it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's the thing. Yeah. You know, the, the listener has to feel, you know, what you're trying to portray. You know, and and the better you do that, the better you know the reaction's going to be. I think that's what's uh, missing a lot in today's music. Um, we're we're lacking the feel of the soul. You know, is is this? I'm not going to say this noise, but um, it, it's lacking its feel because you know how, how we were when we came up. I mean. Uh, Couple couple minutes in the song, when you know, once they set the groove, I mean, you you felt that song. I mean, they had you because it got that yeah. feel. You know what I mean? Oh and, yeah. And and, it, and if it doesn't, if it don't feel good, you could care less about what the lyrics are. Oh right, exactly. That if uh, and I've always said, if you don't have a track, if that track is not singing by itself, and it's not moving you by itself, then you got to start over. You know, <laughs> you, you, it's no way you're gonna gonna be able to communicate something without that music being right. You know, and um, that I found that with every single hit record that I've ever had, is that the music by itself move. You know, it'll move you by itself. Now, now what you have to do next is <laughs> sing a melody. And a hook that's equally as moving, you know, then you really got something special, you know. Well, I'm glad you kind of mentioned that too, because it kind of leads into my next question. Um, I mean, every 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 you know musician or songwriter have a different way that they, you know, put a pen to paper. Or mm-hmm. uh, you know the ideas on on a track. Um, mm-hmm. what, what is what is your thing? How do you come up? What do you do? Gen- well, generally, I uh, I have a musical idea first. You know, uh, whether that be if I'm covering a song or if I'm writing something original, I'll usually have a musical direction where I want to take the song in, and then um, you know, usually the melody comes as a result of the chord progressions I'm using, you know, the melody will come to me next. And then usually the lyric is the last thing that comes, but a lyric that matches what the, you know, what, what the music is portraying too. You know I mean? It has to, you can't have a disjointed lyric, <laughs> you know, that that's not going to work, you know? So um, that's kind of the order that most songs come to me uh, in. Uh, there's been some exceptions, you know, but for the most part, you know, the most majority is, you know, uh, chord progression, melody, and then lyric. As a multi-instrumentalist, I mean, do you find yourself, I mean, do you use your, your keys or uh, your guitar? Or mm-hmm. Well, see, I wrote Caravan of Love on guitar. Caravan of Love I wrote on guitar. Uh but most songs, most of the other ones on keyboards for sure. Um, you know, maybe some funk stuff. I've, you know, had guitar first, like Showdown. I wrote that on guitar. Um, but most most of the time, I'm I'm on the keys. You know, uh, writing. There's any, if there's a, a one thing that you could tell uh, another artist out there that's listening to this show. I mean, some advice in terms of uh, songwriting. What would you advise them to do? How would you advise them to approach it? Well, write what you honestly feel. That's number one. Don't try to, you know, copy somebody else. Be honest with your material. Because the more honest it is, the be- the more effective it is. That's what I find. And, um, and, and also get feedback from people, you know, um, People that will be honest with you, you know, they give you the feedback because that's important too. Because music, you're communicating, you know, with the audience. And I find a lot of times people may be writing maybe something that they feel is good, you know, but how is it received, you know? 
when people hear it, what are they? What are they? Do? Are you? Are they feeling what you're feeling? You know what I mean? And and I and I always say songwriting is it's not for everybody. And a, a lot of people, um, you know, ask me that question. I don't think you can really teach songwriting. It's not for everyone. Uh, I, I think I think it's a gift in a way. And either you know you're, you're blessed with that. Uh, you can learn a lot about songwriting, but uh, I'm, I'm saying, you know, songwriting and, and, and doing it for hits and, and, and doing it consistently. I think I think that's kind of a gift, you know, and um, it's good to just realize that, too, because it, it'll stop some frustrations. Some people, you know, because some people feel, well, you know, if so-and-so wrote a hit, I, I can, too. <laughs> well, not necessarily. <laughs> That's true. Hey, hey look, because every hit maker don't write all hits all the time. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, it's sometimes it's a trial and error thing. You know, where you try something and it, everything doesn't work. You know, it's, it's, it's sort of like an invention. You know, every invention an inventor comes up with it doesn't work. You know, and he has to go back to the drawing board. And it's the same thing with songwriting. Um, everything you write isn't going to be great. You have to be able to, you know, erase. I, I remember in composition, I learned a very important lesson. And, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the professor told me, he said, the composer's best tool is their eraser, you know. And I didn't get it at first when he said it, you know. Well, you know, it, 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 it dawned on me when, 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 when the class was over. I said, oh, now I understand what he's talking about, you know, because – Everything you write isn't going to be great. You have to be able to go back, you know, revise it, you know, work on it. And um, that's very important to detach yourself from what you're doing. You know, a lot of people's egos get involved in their writing, <laughs> you know. And, and that's the last place your ego should be. You know? I was going to ask you about that too, Chris, about the uh, last place. Uh, artists being able to to – humble themselves and be able to accept corrective criticism. That's right. You know, you, 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 when, if you're egotistical and you start writing, you should just quit. Because <laughs> Immediately. You know, you, just quit. Just stop. You know, because what you come up with probably is not going to, you know, work. You know, um, it's, it's, something, it's something you have to work at and be honest about. You know, you have to be honest about it. You have to take your feelings out of it. And that's the only way you get to a, a place where, all right, uh, I, I really feel like I'm doing something now. Because you have to you have to take yourself out of it. And I, I, I know that's hard for some people to do, but you have to learn that. You have to learn how to be selfless. And once you get to that place, then, you know, you, you know how you, you know. You remember the story of Karate Kid, you know how he yeah. made him do other little things to, to to get him to train, you know, to get his mind straight. You know, <laughs> he didn't even teach him any karate at first. You know, told him to paint the fence, do this, do that, do that. Just do some menial things that will get your mind straight. You know, then the teaching starts. You know, and um. That's that's kind of that's kind of how you have to be as a composer. You can't be the have this giant ego and be a great composer because it gets in the way. It, you know, ego and composition fight each other. If anybody's you know, ever worked other. around Quincy, if anybody's ever worked around Quincy Jones, boy, that's one lesson that they definitely learned. Oh yeah, he, he'll he'll tell you in one second. <laughs> you know, you, you know, leave your ego outside. This, this is not about ego here. You know, I don't care who you are. I mean, yeah, he could when, he was, working, who you when are. he was working on that 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 song, you know, we all the world. I mean, you had some of the biggest stars in the world coming in there. You know, yeah, I was I was around doing that. Um, hey, back you on know, the block, back on the block and stuff. You know, don't come in here saying I'm Mr. So and So. <laughs> it's not about that. You know, you, 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 people call you what they call you. You're not supposed to be calling yourself anything. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? You let the people call you something. You know what I mean? Um, that's, that's how I feel about it. I never felt I was, you know, this extraordinary, you know, great person. You know, I, I, I don't think that way. I mean, if somebody else tells calls me that, that's <laughs> that's them saying that. I'm not saying that to myself, though. I'm saying there's still something I can do. There's still something I can accomplish. There's still something I haven't done. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm always hungry. I'm always hungry. You know, and and, well, and, and that's, that's why you continue to have the success that you have as well. Yeah, I, 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 I don't feel I've reached a pinnacle or anything, even though people tell me I have. But that's them telling me. You know what I mean? It's not me saying it. Right. You know, it's, it's a big difference. And, a total big difference, because if that's when you start feeling like that, the day is almost over, man. But as long as you don't feel like like that, you got a lot more to give, a lot more life, a lot more drive, a lot more creating to do. But once you throw the pen and pencil away, then, you know, you're totally on a uh, extended vacation, so to speak. Yeah, I've seen it before where people, you know, they stick their chest out and say, oh, yeah, I'm I'm so-and-so. And then, and then you see creativity. Uh, you know, well, they haven't done nothing in five years or ten years. What happened? You know what I mean? It's like, well, that that fights creativity, right? You see what I mean? They start talking it about they got water. writers' pours, block. Yeah, it pours water on the fire, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you, you can't, you can't, you can't be like like that and continue to be consistent and creative. You can't. The two things don't match. That's that's a, some definitely jewels you give to our listeners that they definitely um, uh, need to write down and adhere to. Uh, and, and I guess to put it in a, in a real simple term, uh, learn how to get out of your own way. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yes. We got another song of yours up here, Chris. We're going to let our listeners put their ear on this, and then, you know, we can come back and talk about it. Nothing mm-hmm. can change this love. Yes. All right. Yes. Everybody, you know the drill. Let the windows down, turn the air conditioner up, and, and put your ears on this. Nothing can change this love, Mr. Chris Jasper. If I could go. Nothing 
Change his love. You know, Chris, you know, you know, I heard a little Sam Cooke in there. Oh, yeah, man. That's his song. You know, that's one of his classics. And um, my wife and I, we were listening to his greatest hits. And this song, the Nothing Can Change His Love, came on. And uh, Margie said, You know, hey, you know, Chris, you can, you can do something with this one, I, I'm sure, you know, because <laughs> we were looking for things to cover, you know. And I said, Yeah, okay, I'm going a, I'm to a work with this. And the more I worked with it, the more I liked it, man. And I, I, I really enjoyed doing it because he, he was like, you know, my favorite singer, like the soul singer. And uh, it was just a great thing to do a tribute to him because uh, he influenced me in a lot of ways uh, with, with, you know, vocally, you know. So very happy with, with doing that song. Right, and you did it well, my friend. Uh, you definitely Thank did you. it well. So. My hat's off to that man, and uh, I definitely enjoy it, and I'm sure uh, our listeners out there enjoy it. I mean, because you taking this back to to real music, to real music. Yeah, I, I think that's important. You know, that people don't forget, you know, where all this stuff started and where it came from. You know, um, and you know that was like the beginnings of, you know, R and B. You know, getting popular, becoming popular. You know, um, you know they used to call the blues like you know race music, and they you know, a lot of people wouldn't play it. And but when Sam came along, uh, the stuff he was doing was really, really, really different. You know, and he had a style that you know everybody started to accept. You know, uh, he he crossed over. You know, and um, he was he was doing great things, and. Um, I just don't want people to forget that, you know, because um, no. R&B is like, you know, one of the jewels of this country, you know. That's true. And uh, true. we we so can't true. forget it. You know, we we can't forget You're it, man. You're absolutely right. Chris, you know what I'm let saying? me jump in here, man. Yes, yes. Let me jump in here, man. We like got down to the minute and a half, man. The show flies okay. when you're having fun and great conversation. But I want, but I want you to tell our listeners how to get in touch with you, how to get your music, and where they can get it at. Oh, sure. Yeah, just go to chrisjasper.com, and then that'll take you to all the different places where you can get the music. All of my albums are on there. Facebook is on there, everything. chrisjasper.com. Right, man. I definitely enjoyed uh, kicking it with you again, man. Uh, you're welcome to come back anytime, anytime, man, because, uh, I mean, I love to talk to real uh, musicians, songwriters, and uh just all around great people, man. I definitely enjoyed the show and this time with you, man. I enjoyed being on with you, man. And uh, thank you. And uh, thanks to the fans always. Thanks to, to all the listeners and, and, you know, people that follow my career, man. I'm I'm very thankful. Yes, yes. And you be safe out there. And for all our listeners, this show will be uh, available uh, worldwide in about two minutes. So you don't have no excuse if you missed any part of it. You could hear it on all the platforms. You know, it's not any platform out there that show is not going to be available. And uh, check it out. You know, you won't be disappointed. And for all you artists out there, uh, Chris dropped some jewels that could definitely help you with your career. And uh, that's all I got for today. Thank you again, Chris. Uh, enjoyed you, man. Be safe. And for all our listeners, we'll be back next week, same time. And, again, uh, we appreciate you. Be safe out there and uh, be safe and good to others. All right. Thanks a lot.
All right. Talk to you later, my friend. Okay. Great show, everyone. So uh, definitely check it out from the beginning. Uh, you definitely, definitely won't be disappointed. Um, oh, man, the music just blew me away. I'm so excited. Guess what your time is up.